Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to your Taurus April 2022 reading and predictions. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James. As you subscribers will know, always great to see you. Do you know I look forward to seeing you each month? Truly I do. Now this month we are going to use some Hindu mythology themes, I think. Uh, that's just what I'm in the mood for. And this is a deck that is used that is very difficult to get hold of. It always has been since it first came out. I did get it when it came out. It's still in reasonable condition. That's because you notice I don't riffle shuffle my tarot cards or my playing cards, actually, uh, because I like to make sure that they stay in some sort of reasonable condition. And this does the job. There's the five of arrows. And here is the wheel. This is the world. Interesting. This is justice. And what might we take from somewhere down in here, do you think? Let's have a look. No looking. <laughs> no looking. What is there? Oh, beautiful. The Seven of Cups. Okay, as usual, come and sit down here next to me. We'll have a good close look at the imagery on these cards together while I do the reading for you. Then now I think you can see those. Let's start with this Major Arcana, which is justice. Now, ah, let's have a look to see what from Hindu mythology is associated with it. Oh, this is this is good. This is Varuna, the guardian of cosmic justice, lord of the sky. And he was once the most revered and powerful deity of Vedic India. When it came to ultimate principles, Varuna was the great god who sustained the universe. Well, of course, Vishnu is the sustainer now. And originally a dual god, he was known as Mitra Varuna, the former ruling during the day and the latter at night. He ultimately merged into one elevated deity. Varuna became the great observer of deeds, punishing actions that transgressed not just the law, but of the cosmic order itself. Now, astrologically here, I have, um, what would it be? Venus ruling Libra with Saturn exalted. Well, Libra emphasizes that the energy of this card and of Varuna here is all about balance and equilibrium. Karmic cause and effect, bringing a situation into balance, I think, is what is needed here. So what we're coming through at a moment here for you is that of balance, centering, equilibrium, the balancing of opposites I see here. Now, Libra is very prominent in this card, and that is a fascinating picture of balance. The predominant colors in the background here are blue and green. Blue is the color of spiritual and intellectual powers, such as thinking, ideas, wisdom. And green is the color of creativity, the power to put ideas into action. Do you know, I really think that at this time, this energy here is to say that this is a summons to you to avoid all extremes in your daily life. This may refer to emotional disturbances in relationships or at work, in some creative activity or in dealings with money. Total centeredness and inner balance are needed if great new ideas are rising now to bear fruit. As remember, from a position of balance, everything develops in a balanced way in its place, given its appropriate value. Look, the storms of life throw us out of balance again and again, and there are a couple of moments here where there are a couple of small, minor skirmishes and storms, I suppose, but the constant change between being centered and uncentered. And I noticed the wheel that's here as well is the process which teaches you to be more conscious from moment to moment in order to retain that inner peace and clarity when you find it. So pay attention to what situations in your daily life tend to throw you off balance 
discover the conditions under which you find harmony again, and carry this quality with you more and more as you move through your daily activities. Maybe ask yourself, what helps you to reach your, your calm centre and to stay there? And what happens when you lose your centre? Say this to yourself at this time. I am balanced and centred. I honour my word. I value being truthful in difficult situations. The abundance and beauty of nature is a reflection of my own nature. I am at rest in my own centre. Now let's have a look at what is the Kala Chakra, known in Hindi, and it's this, the Wheel of Fortune. Interesting, isn't it? Let's have a look there. Well, do you know the Wheel of Fortune is also the, what's known as the Kala Chakra, the Wheel of Time, Fate, Fortune, Destiny, Kismet, Karma, they're all a function of time. In the passage of time, your acceptance of and your response to the ups and downs of the current moment determine if you are tied to the fate wheel or moving in harmony with the wheel of life. Now, what the good news is about this card is that it is infected or blessed with the planet of Jupiter all over it. So there's a change of fortune coming along your way, and that is good. There's also an element of destiny here. There's new beginnings, expansion, creativity, probably a big breakthrough, I think, uh, and some unexpected good fortune and luck. There's a chance opportunity maybe winning uh, something in a small way on the lottery, some ups and downs, of course. There's an element of fate going on here. And there's the possibility of a change of, well, a, a, a meeting, changes in people, a, a meeting of a, of a new person that can bring about a great opportunity. This is a definite yes, this card. Be ready to act on any unexpected opportunities that come your way, therefore. Now, when times are good, stay centred, because things can change. And if you think that things are challenging, don't be discouraged, because the wheel turns and things turn then for the better. Change is about to happen in your life. And you may need to alter your present course or change things around to set the stage for the right outcome to come into your life. But remember, if you struggle against the course of life, you become like someone struggling against the wheel and you are liable to be crushed underneath it. Stay centered like this elephant is here. Then you will never be shaken or broken. Now, if no miracles are happening in your life, something is wrong. You, you stand before the possibility of a great breakthrough, I think, so use the moment. Are you really ready for the great good fortune that's coming your way? What's standing in the way? Write down or list to a trusted person what fortune means to you in your present situation. Then. Make a new list of everything which prevents you experiencing fortune right now and say, I am a prosperous individual. I am flexible in times of change. I enjoy manifesting internal abundance externally. Abundance which created me is what I am. I am now ready for the miracle of my life. Let's have a look at the central card. That's very important to you. And gee, interestingly, it's on this same theme here, I've got to say, so these things definitely have this message for you. Let's have a look here, give you a good look at the art on it. Can you see that? That should be okay. Do you know, really, the, the eternal rhythm of galaxies waning into and renewing from stellar debris is the dance of Shiva. Natraja, the king of the dancers. Shiva is one of the, the third member of the Hindu trinity of Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, 
the one who is playful, but also brings about change in life and renews things. Now galaxies hurtle across an ever-expanding universe. Expanding in what space, if space itself is expanding? Now for the Indian mystic, the question has a very simple answer. It expands within infinite consciousness. Now I think that what this is saying to you here in the position next to this wheel and opposite the justice card, this triumvirate that's running along this way, if you like, is that this is talking about the completion of a project. Your efforts are finally paying off. It's been a long, hard haul, but you're almost there. And this is a reminder to you to finish what you started. You'll be learning to take control of your own destiny. The power of your will is going to get results. And I think you can possibly reach new levels of spiritual understanding as well. Now you see yourself and the world as it really is. All garments and masks have become superfluous and useless because you are at one with your original nature. You are dancing, caught up in this perpetual dancing motion of the universe. The boundaries of your small I dissolve in orgasmic union with the universe itself. I think you could actually be quite ecologically minded during this period. Certainly you will also have the desire for new experiences, in particular to try and experience as much of the world and, and its people as is possible. Now, maybe before the age of 21 there was a sexual block which needed cutting through, but that's happened. And now, there is now something which is ending and beginning at the same time. There may be a desire to travel or to study, or to liberate a sexual reticence. It's now possible for you to see things as they really are. The stage is set for a new beginning or a favorable completion. The events in your life are in harmony with the universe. Now, from what aspects of your life is it time to free yourself? Is there a journey or an enterprise waiting for you to set it in motion? Trust your perceptions. Make a list of all unfinished situations whose resolution would give you a sense of relief. And say this, I love to travel. I love to explore the unknown. I am excited about bringing ideas and creative projects into form. I deeply value making a contribution that makes the world a better place to live, and I am at one with the universe. Now, where might we go, do you think? Let's, oh, I love this color, so let's do this. Who's that? It's Pravati, I think. Now, let's have a look. What can I say? Well, Pavati used to perform what was known as Tabasya, which is sitting down, meditating, and just enduring mental or physical pain. Uh, very often in combination with meditation. But she used to make uh, break her meditation every day to water trees and to feed deer. Now, this apparent emotional attachment to material things such as animals and trees seemed to some of the more holier-than-thou types back then to be an eccentric falling away from high standards. Now, they thought that rather than spending time watering trees or feeding deer, it could be the time could be better spent in yet more tapasya more endurance of pain, which was to bring about, one endured the pain in order to bring about spiritual enlightenment. But she, she said though, that they didn't understand spirituality at all. And the Rig Veda would agree with her. Rig Veda is 
sacred, part of sacred Hindu literature. Uh, there's a verse in there which, which said that a tree is worth the birth of ten sons. Uh, sons had a very special place in Indian culture. And to take care of trees has always been regarded as an, an especially good thing to do in India. To feed just dumb animals also has been highly praised especially those who become dependent upon humans as deer are inclined to be in India throughout history. Now, the astrology here provides something of a challenge in that it is Venus ruling the third decan of Scorpio, 13th to the 22nd of November. Well, Venus is, as you know, the planet of love and relationship and Scorpio is very much associated with intensity and with in-depth transformation and with exploration of the self and others. Now, I'm looking at the number seven here as well. Now, mystically, I have an association with Venus in the number seven as well. But I also have the concept of victory associated with Venus when she's sitting numerologically in the number of seven. But we have Venus in seven and we have Venus in Scorpio in the astrology of the card. And Venus is in detriment in Scorpio, by the way. So she can't express her sensitivity and emotions problem properly. Instead, they are channeled into and, and can be channeled into negative addictions and intensity which is the darker side of Scorpio. And it implies that you could indulge in excess reactive behavior due to something that has affected you deeply and changed you and changed you in a way which, which th throws up its own set of problematic situations. Now, I, I see here that Venus is also working in the sphere of your mind where her influence is by no means clear-sightedness, and you may find that you believe what you want to believe when you're under this double dose of Venus. So it may be that this card could relate to indulging in addictive emotions, which don't necessarily represent your highest good. It could be things like overeating, drinking, drugs, Sometimes it can mean promiscuity, promiscuity for some people, but not for you, I don't think. And you can engage in negative thoughts, which you self-medicate by excesses in other areas of life. I mean, you love the good life, don't you? And sometimes too much of the good life can be too much because you can develop negative patterns of behavior which relate to sex or your diet or alcohol or drugs. Recognize though, if you have lost control over circumstances and whether they are producing damaging lifestyle choices because you need perhaps to get back to who you really are. Is there, for example, some disappointment you haven't yet worked out fully have you experienced something that was just a little bit too good? Have you overtaxed yourself or overdone things in any way? Say this to yourself, though, because it's true for you more than anybody. As I recognize and accept my shadows, if I accept and name my shadows, they lose their power over me. And I think that finally takes us. Is it final? Let's have a look. Yeah, it does. Chuck a lot of Venus around here as well. Venus is going to be with you. I mean, it is your planet, but uh, let's make sure she's working in the right way for you. You're not condemned by any aspect of astrology. Once you recognize that you have the freedom to live your life to the fullest, you understand that, don't you? I'm just pointing out the energies that are around. Now, this looks like a scene from the uh, another of the, the Hindu sacred texts, the Mahabharata. I won't go into the background of it. The Mahabharata is something that you can, it's free, you can read it on the internet, it's extremely interesting. 
Now, here we have a character. Well, we have a, there's three interesting people here. Here's an older woman, here's a younger guy, and here's what looks to be some sort of a chief, maybe a chieftain or a, of, of, a, of a villager. So this young guy, I think, is um, Devarata, who tries his best to convince the fisher chief to grant him Satir, Satravati as his stepmother. Now, even his, and he's like the king, he wants her to be his stepmother. Now, even his promise that his children would not dispute the throne was insufficient to permit the fisherman to say, well, you can, um, you can have her as a stepmother. Now, at that point, the young man makes a terrible and spectacular vow that literally shakes the universe. He promises not only to renounce the throne, but to become eternally celibate. Now, never before had a young prince of the culture made such a sacrifice, and this astonishing renunciation was instantly acclaimed by the awed gods as a unique achievement of spiritual greatness, and they shower flowers down upon his head in praise, and a divine voice thunders out his new name, Bhishma, the one of the, ter the terrible vow. Now, as I say, I have Venus around here, and I have Venus ruling the first decan of Aquarius in this instance, the 22nd to the 29th of January. Now, you know that Venus rules your sign, which is an Earth sign. But here we have Venus ruling an air sign, and the two are at odds with one another. Now, Venus is a, a lover and not a fighter, whereas Aquarius is a rebel ruled by Uranus, and Aquarius is a fighter, usually for causes, so the individualistic, dispassionate nature of Aquarius clashes with Venus, the planet of relationship. Now in this number five here, I also numerically, uh, numerologically have associated with it, and mystically, the planet of of Mars. So Venus is, not only is she in this dispassionate uh, sign of Aquarius, but she's overwhelmed by the fiery and dispassionate nature of Mars. So we just don't have any astrological harmony in this call, in this card. Now it may be that during a period in a month there is a fear of defeat that might dominate you. It may be connected with relationships or more generally with the beginning of something which is of great importance to you. It is the fear of losing control, of experiencing the feeling that everything is slipping out of your hands. Now this fear may distort your view of the present. Remember we had that very illusory sense of Venus where she was coming in this card here where her activity at the moment is, is just not clear-sightedness, well, your, your view may be distorted by something. This card is reinforcing it. Um, so it, it could distort your view of the present and of the unknown in your future. Now, the, the Five of Swords can relate to a betrayal or a sneak attack by someone you trust and don't suspect as your enemy. Maybe it's more to do with gossip. I've got a feeling around here that there's a woman who's a troublemaker. And uh, there's a woman who's a troublemaker here. And there's some gossip going on around you. A jealous person who is trying to sabotage you behind your back. But your fear may be the result of losing control emotionally due to previous hurts from relationships. Or it may be connected with, with the workplace where you've had an experience that stopped you from expressing yourself fully and your confidence has been lost. Well, if you let go of the feeling of fear, then the energy that's bound up with this bow 
will be able to be put to good use. This is a mental turmoil that you're going through here because it's in the suit of arrows, or in this case, swords. So it's mental, mental. But it can relate to emotions as well, though, because of the presence, the very heavy presence of Venus all throughout your spread. But this indicates that now you are ready to see your fear of defeat and seeing, understanding, accepting and letting go of your fear, that's going to set you free. What do you associate with the idea of defeat? And say to yourself, I am not my fears. It is safe for me to live without guarding and defending myself all the time. When I feel afraid, I open my heart and I let love dissolve the fear. I accept my fear. I name the fear or fears that I have and they lose their power over me and I let them just fly away. That's the way it is for you this month. Well, thanks for joining me. It's been really great to see you and I, I, I loved sitting down with you and, and doing that reading for you. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed providing it to you. And isn't it interesting? Isn't it interesting, all that stuff? Well, remember one thing, of course, and that is this, that you are a legend and I look forward to seeing you again next month. And until then, it's bye for now.